Hey all, Kraken Latte here. With all this talk of raw gold, Shadowlands customizations, the current leveling buff, and the new leveling system coming, many of you have been asking me, why an alt army? Why so many characters? What even is an alt army? How do you deal with so many characters? So in this video, I'm going to cover those topics in a pros and cons format, as well as how I deal with the cons so that you can make the decisions that best fit you. But first, let's give a warm welcome to my newest patrons! Jennifer Ninja Kitten Cootwear, Something Birdie, Jacket, and IB Raider. Thank you so much for your support, and welcome to the Kraken Crew! Alright, let's get into it. So let's start with the subject of alts and alt armies. What is an alt? The word alt stands for alternate character. This is a secondary type of character who, usually, you'll devote less time to than your main character. Of course, that's a bit vague in and of itself, but it works for the sake of this discussion. So then, if an alt is a secondary character, having an alt army simply means that you have a lot of them. 5 plus? 10 plus? Well, there isn't really a set in stone number. You just kind of know at a certain point when you can look at your roster and go, yep, that's an army. In this case, I like to add that this is specifically your roster of max level characters, since those are the ones you'll be using for various purposes as they have access to all levels of content. You can include twink alts in that list, which are characters who are capped at lower levels since this is usually done for the purpose of farming something specific. So that's what defines alts and alt armies, but what would be the point to do such a thing? Let's dive into the pros first. Number one. The first and most obvious pro would be that it's easy to swap between classes and roles if you already have them leveled. This can make you more flexible for raids and dungeons. And we all love that guildy who was able to save the day by grabbing their tank alt when the main tank was sick. Hooray! Number two. A big pro would be that you're able to repeat daily and weekly lockouts to get gold, mounts, mog, and what have you sooner. Instead of one try at Invincible each week, you could have ten tries. Or more. Ha! Who's the Lich King now, am I right? Right? Right. Anyways. Number three. Another pro I recently learned about is that gold cap is per character. So if you don't have a personal guild bank to shove all that gold in, you could cap it across all your alts many times. Not something I'd want to do, but hey, don't let me cramp your style. Number four. Alts also benefit from account-wide systems like the newish Honor and Prestige ranks. So if you get fed up with trying to reach a new Prestige rank with your Paladin, you can hop over to your Druid and keep it going. If only they'd add reputation to this sort of system. Hmm, one day. One day. Number five. The next pro would be that you'll always have another character if needed. This sort of goes with the first and fourth pros, but I consider it another bonus. So say you're trying to do old raid achievements for a mount, and you totally flub up something. Now you can't try again until next week. But most, not all, but most, metas are account-wide, meaning you could do the rest of it on an alt and not have to wait. That's a pro in my book. Number six. Alts can also take advantage of once-per-character things like the Tap Tap event or the Wicker Pup treasure pieces in Drustvar. You can only do stuff like this once, but if you have alts, you can do it again. This is a pro because some things like this, such as the two I mentioned, are pets that can be sold for gold. They were more profitable at the start of the expansion, but this stuff is great to keep an eye out for. Number seven. Perhaps a more minor pro, but a win in my opinion, is that you get to use more mog sets and character customization without going to the barber so much. This lends to letting you focus on really making unique characters that are more honed into a specific theme, since you don't have to choose between styles you like. This is a major factor for many our peers, such as myself, and this is the first and foremost reason that I have so many alts. And with all the sweet customizations coming in Shadowlands, I smell an alt frenzy coming on for many players. Number eight. This next pro is a little more specific to some people, but I know it counts for me. You get variety. You can be more choosy with what you can play at any moment. I'm the type of person who gets bored easy, so having a plethora of classes and races at my beck and call keeps me satisfied. Number nine. And back to a more practical pro, 
you're able to have all of the professions on your own account. And if you have multiple of the same profession, you can get around the recipes with cooldown restrictions by crafting the item multiple times each day. This is fabulous for gold makers. So that's a healthy list of pros, but like with anything, there are cons. I'll also mention how I deal with each one, so let's take a look. Number one, the biggest and most obvious con is upkeep. This can be a grievous task or not a big deal at all. It depends on what you're doing with your alts. Upkeep covers issues like quest line and zone unlocks, gear, expansion power, and so on. Gear and power are understandable and may or may not affect you. Like for me, I don't really bother with gearing my alts beyond whatever makes them comfortable for world content. So in this case, world quest gear, alt catch-up gear, and maybe some world boss or LFR gear. But to add to that, the game varies on alt friendliness for zone unlock quest lines, such as Legion's Broken Shore, which has a full skip after doing it once, or the intro to Najatar, which does not. It might not be very long, but you need it to unlock world quests. So try doing that intro more than 10 times without pulling your hair out. You'll know what I mean. Number two. The next con would be that you might feel obligated to keep your alts in top shape. It could be pressure from your friends, your guild, or even yourself. But if this is a con for you, you might want to think about who you play with. It doesn't bother me, as I prefer to keep only a couple of my characters in the best gear and power I can get my hands on. But being a former raider myself, I completely understand this situation. Number three, a con that doesn't affect everyone, but is really annoying if it affects you, is if you end up with more than 50 characters, you have to make use of a second account, which means a second subscription. Luckily, this can be paid for gold, so that part really isn't an issue for me. But I can certainly tell you I would not bother with multiple accounts if the 50 per account cap were to be lifted. Maybe someday. Number four. A more minor con is that some people will make fun of you and try to put you down for having more characters than them or not focusing on your main or some other arbitrary excuse. Granted, this comes with anything, but who cares what the narrow-minded think? I used to get picked on a lot in previous guilds for the same subject, and yet I was always the one to be called on if a certain role or class was needed for a raid. Hmm, let's think about that. Don't let other people's negative judgments keep you from playing how you want. Number five. The last con I could think of would be that you won't put as much time on your main because you have alts. Does this count as a con? I suppose it depends on the person. It isn't really a con for me, since I play to experience everything in the game, which can mostly be done on any character. The one I consider my main was my first character to cap when I started back in Mists of Pandaria, as that character is the one I get all the reputations and story quest lines done on. Other than a self-obligation you might have, this isn't really a con for me. So there we have it. Those are all the pros and cons to having an alt army that I could think of. There could be more, but these are the ones I felt were most important. As with all of my videos, I'm not trying to convince you for or against it, because I want you to make your own decisions based on the information presented. That is what makes you who you are, and will ultimately give you greater enjoyment because you chose what you wanted. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte. And that's it! Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video! Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and poke that bell for more Coffee Field content. Leave a comment down below if you liked it, and remember, it's never too latte.